European Fiestas were equipped with naturally aspirated Duratec engines, 1.25, 60 and 82 horsepower, 1.4, 96 horsepower, and 1.6, 85, 105, 120 horsepower. The latter has also been produced in Elbuga since 2015. Block blanks, heads, crankshafts, piston group parts are Russian and made from Russian raw materials. Castings were processed on imported automated lines. Selective assembly was used at the plant. If anyone is looking for a car with minimal maintenance costs, mainly for city use, I advise you to take a closer look at the Fiesta. Just don't get one with a 60 horsepower engine, like ours. It doesn't have enough power. This is the main drawback of our car. The 1.25 liter version will suit only a very calm driver. The 1.4 liter version is more optimal. Of course, the 1.6 liter engine is even more powerful, and you can take the weaker version and upgrade it to the same 120 horsepower. But fuel consumption will be higher than that of the 1.4, and the manual gearbox is under even greater load but more on that below. The 1.4 engine is excellent for everyday use. The average consumption since the last service is 6.7 liters, mainly in the city. At a speed of 90, the consumption is 4.8 liters on cruise control. If you drive 120, then about 6.6 .6 liters are spent. Why what's missing is a large tank? Because the volume is only 45 liters, you have to take a canister with you on a long journey. I have good news for you. Now, if you are planning to buy a used car or learn more about your car, you no longer need to search for the information you need on the internet. We have collected everything in one place for you on the website carmi.pro. Here you can find out everything about the car, what brakes and at what mileage, any problems with engines, chassis or gearboxes, which trim levels are better not to mess with and how not to lose money buying a used car. You will learn all this on carm.pro. In any case, these, aspirated, engines have proven themselves to be durable. 300,000 kilometers are quite achievable, especially in the case of 1.4 and 1.6 engines, and in general, devoid of serious problems affecting reliability. But firstly, this is achieved with timely maintenance, and secondly, it is not guaranteed to get rid of minor troubles. So, although replacing the timing belt is recommended every 120,000 kilometers, this is reasonable for a factory kit, and when using, licensed, parts it is worth reducing the interval to 90,000 kilometers or at least from this mileage to monitor the condition of the belt at each maintenance. Also, after 120,000 kilometers, it may be necessary to replace the crankcase ventilation valve, PCV. The part is inexpensive but responsible. If the valve fails, serious damage to the engine can occur. An original oil filter will cost $6, and decent brands will cost $4 to $5. An air filter is more expensive, but for example, Connect will be in the top 10, and MAN 7 to 8. In general, in terms of costs we like the maintenance of the Fiesta, both in terms of fuel consumption and maintenance. Modifications with variable valve timing can make life difficult due to insufficiently durable phase regulators. And with age, oil leaks through gaskets and seals and coolant leaks through leaky hoses are possible. Plus, the pump is far from the most reliable unit, and this already entails the risk of overheating. In general, there are no special problems, but in terms of small details, an old engine may well keep the owner on his toes. Accordingly, health and longevity depend, among other things, on the quality of service. After restyling, Fiesta received a 1.0-liter three-cylinder naturally aspirated engine, 65 to 80 horsepower, as well as the famous EcoBoost of the same volume, 100, 125 and 140 horsepower, which repeatedly won the International Engine Award year. Due to its characteristics, they are truly outstanding but this is achieved by complicating the design. Thus, to ensure immediate traction even from low revs, a low inertia continental turbine and a system of independently variable intake and exhaust timing are used, and direct fuel injection is also used. The engine block is cast from cast iron, 
which increases its rigidity, reduces the amount of energy required for warming up by 50% and reduces fuel consumption. To optimize the temperature regime, a split cooling system with two thermostats is used. An exhaust manifold integrated into the cylinder head reduces exhaust gas temperatures, optimizing engine performance over a wide speed range. To reduce the vibration load of the three-cylinder engine, a new balancing scheme has been used, and a low-friction timing belt and oil mist with a dynamic tensioner is designed to make the engine very quiet. Surprisingly, all this economy lives for a long time and does not bother us with serious problems, especially after 2015. And in early versions, for example, fogging or oil leaks from under the valve cover and cylinder head, as well as malfunctions of the cooling system were noted, cases of hose destruction were noted, and a leaking pump seal is also typical. We also remember about direct injection, turbocharging, and a generally complex design it's definitely not worth saving on the quality of fuel and lubricants and maintenance. By the way, Ford Castrol Magnatech Professional E5W20 oil with WSSM2C948B approval was developed specifically for this engine. Now there are analogs from other manufacturers, but it is better to choose strictly according to the specifications. And of course, let's not forget about the most obvious blow to the budget, replacing the timing drive. The fact is that the belt is bathed in an oil bath, so the replacement procedure is labor-intensive, with its own specifics, requiring the mandatory replacement of additional parts, gaskets, bolts, etc. As a result, the cost of work and materials depends on the chosen location work ranges from $400 to $1,000. Initially, Ford declared the belt life at 240,000 kilometers in 10 years, but in our conditions it has to be changed when it reaches 120,000 kilometers or after 5 years. There are quite a few images on the internet of a belt that is fairly worn out and with much lower mileage, so it's better not to take risks here. Tightening environmental standards and the introduction of the same 1.0-liter EcoBoost has led to the fact that the role of small displacement diesel engines in the Fiesta power line has decreased. Nevertheless, over the years, the car was equipped with 1.4 TDCI, 70 horsepower, 1.5 TDCI, 75 to 95 horsepower, and 1.6 TDCI, 75 to 95 horsepower, engines. All of them are of French origin, obtained as a result of collaboration between Ford and the PSA concern. The 1.5 TDCI engine is essentially a downsized version of the 1.6 liter turbo diesel. The displacement is reduced due to the piston diameter from 75 to 73.5 mm while maintaining the stroke of 88.3 mm. From its predecessor, it inherited such sores as failure of the turbine actuator and the oil separator, which throws oil onto the turbine. Just as with the 1.6 liter engine, cars with short city trips have problems with the EGR valve. Therefore, further ignoring the problem is fraught with intake problems failure of the particulate filter. By the way, early versions, including those officially sold we might not have it. The remaining issues are related either to age or to previous use. It is worth noting here that in Europe, diesel fiestas often worked in corporate fleets, and specifically as courier or acceleration vehicles, so the mileage and condition are appropriate. After the purchase, you should immediately replace the timing drive, again. The official interval of 200,000 kilometers is too optimistic, and you should also change the fuel injection pump pulley star. You can read more about pass-through Ford engines in a separate article. The most common is the 5-speed manual IB5, which has proven itself to be not the most durable. The bearings suffer, and for active drivers the differential is also at risk. Of course, on a light Fiesta with predominantly low-power engines, the gearbox does not suffer as much as on heavier and more powerful focuses. But it is obvious that the chances of finishing off it with a 1.6 liter engine are much greater than with the stunted 1.25. In any case, the unit cannot be called completely problem-free. Therefore, before purchasing, carefully listen to the operation of the manual transmission in all modes, increased noise and howls should alert you. To delay the occurrence of problems, 
Try not to unnecessarily load the gearbox, especially when it's cold. Change the oil every 60,000 kilometers and watch for transmission oil leaks through the axle seals. Before restyling, Fiesta with a 1.4-liter gasoline engine could be equipped with a 4-speed automatic transmission, which pleases with service life and reliability, and even on well-traveled cars does not require anything other than timely oil changes. More recent Fiestas were equipped with a 6-speed Gitrag 6DCT250 robot with dry clutches. Its unimportant reputation, as usual, applies more to the earlier versions, where of the shift mechanism, incorrect firmware and malfunctions of the control unit led to delays and shocks when changing gears. Jerking and vibration at low speeds could be the result of another problem. A leak in the gearbox input shaft seal led to contamination of the clutch discs and their slipping, which affected the operation of the transmission. We talked in detail about this problem and ways to solve it using the example of the Ford Focus. After numerous upgrades, the box was improved, so it is better to take the version after the 2015 release. But in any case, the robot requires careful diagnosis before purchase and careful handling during operation. The Fiesta's suspension is typical of compact cars, McPherson struts at the front and a beam at the rear. But the chassis is tuned well, it gives the car pleasant handling. However, it is worth considering that this applies to a greater extent to European versions. Russian assembled cars received increased ground clearance to 167 mm plus 17 mm, retuned shock absorbers and a stiffer anti-roll bar. The mileage of parts, stabilizer struts, silent blocks, ball joints, springs, cannot be called a record, but it helps somewhat that owners usually take care of cars with a tight suspension and, accordingly, load it less on uneven surfaces. The racers can easily refill it every 50 to 60,000 kilometers. Well, the prices for the main parts, even levers and shock absorbers, are quite low. Why not drive? Wheel bearings are already expensive but they also last a long time. The same can be said about the brakes. The steering is also considered resourceful, and knocking noises are usually caused by wear on the drive shaft, but this is not a terrible problem. Fiesta ST has a number of differences from regular versions, so we'll talk about it separately. The car is powerful and fast, 182 horsepower, and 220 km per hour maximum speed, 240 newton meters and 6.9 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour but there was also a 200 horsepower version european sts are purely three door american sts are five door the chassis features modernized steering knuckles and a rear beam with increased torsional rigidity the original springs and shock absorber settings were also used the ground clearance was reduced by 15 millimeters and the center of gravity was reduced by the same amount. The steering is with a shorter, only 2.3 turns from lock to lock, rack and a retuned electric power steering. Larger brakes at the front, disc brakes at the rear, and a more powerful master cylinder. But accordingly, finding all these components and parts will not be as easy as for a regular Fiesta. Their cost will be higher. 182 horsepower? I believe it! They are not confused in the gears of the box, not exhausted by excess weight and not calmed by concerns about the environment the Fiesta ST really goes for these 180 plus. Horses. The 1.6 EcoBoost engine doesn't seem to be very boosted. 182 horsepower firmware is also available for other Ford passenger models. But let's not forget what kind of life. Charged hot hatches. Live. Track days. Amateur racing just driving fast plus an attempt to further increase the impact. So overheating and damage to pistons sometimes happens on hot Fiestas. But the 6-speed manual transmission is much stronger than its 5-speed relative and can withstand high torque and aggressive driving. Most likely, if you have to spend money on anything, it will only be on replacing the clutch. At least with a mileage of up to 200,000 kilometers. As you can see, maintainability and therefore the cost of repairs, if needed, largely depends on what kind of engine and gearbox are installed on the car. It is clear that the ST version will be more expensive to maintain. But unexpectedly, you risk paying a lot during 
major maintenance, with replacing the timing drive and in the case of the 1.0 liter EcoBoost. You have to be careful with the robotic box too. Therefore, the best option from the point of view of operating costs is a 1.4 or 1.6 gasoline engine, but only with a live, manual transmission or a tested, automatic. Diesel will probably not be so much more economical as it will be more tired. And of course, we recommend the Fiesta after restyling. Not because it looks like a small Aston Martin, but because at least it will be more recent in terms of year of manufacture and has seen fewer winters in our latitudes taking into account the corrosion resistance of the body. This is also important. European Fiestas are three- and five-door hatchbacks, as well as commercial versions based on them, without add-ons, but with darkened windows and corresponding interior trim in the cargo compartment. Sedans were also offered for the U.S., Russian, and Chinese markets. But even they do not have much capacity, which is especially obvious on the basis of B-plus models like the Skoda Rapid or Renault. Let's be honest, Fiesta does not have the most spacious interior and not the most capacious trunk, 295 liters for the hatchback and 455 liters for the sedan, and this must be taken into account when choosing, especially if you are taking the only car for the family. But the interior and the quality of the materials used are at the level of European B-Class models, which, whatever one may say, is higher than that of the notorious Russian assembled. State employees, it's convenient to drive a Fiesta around the city. It's nimble, compact. You can park it in any yard. A very big plus is that the car is maneuverable. In terms of comfort, I would like better sound insulation, because when you drive at high speed plus, in our opinion, it's not the best asphalt. You can hear it all very well. As a rule, the equipment is not the most sophisticated, but there are few problems with functional equipment. Complaints about the operation of the interior heating and ventilation system are relatively common, from a banal breakdown of switch levers to a malfunction of the heater motor, and on older copies certain problems are already possible due to loss of contacts due to corrosion or broken wiring in the doors. Cars of these years had very soiled fabric, especially for the rear seats. If no one drives in the back, dust accumulates there, no one knocks it out. The slightest drop of water a stain appears on the upholstery. Another problem is that the seat fastenings rust. Moreover, I looked at different cars, they all have this problem. The body is welded from galvanized metal, but the paintwork is not the thickest and most resistant to mechanical damage, so old cars, especially if they were not particularly looked after or were driven by not very careful drivers, often already have a rather tired appearance. What's worse is that after six to eight years, corrosion can appear in hidden cavities, in welds and on folds, so good appearance should not relax you when inspecting the car before purchasing. Try to get to the power elements, carefully inspect the bottom, sills, lower edges of the doors and unpleasant surprise may await you. Fiesta 6 does not rot quickly, but it is still difficult to call it a leader in terms of body corrosion resistance.